Welcome to Grace Fellowship Baptist Church Wednesday Evening Bible Study for Wednesday, December 7th, 2022. We are in the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 23, and um, we're going to start in verse 1. When David was told, look, the Philistines are fighting against Kalia and are looting the threshing floors, he inquired of the Lord, saying, shall I go and attack these Philistines? The Lord answered him, go, attack the Philistines and save Kalia. But David's men said to him, Here in Judah we are afraid. How much more then if we go to Kelia against the Philistine forces? Once again David inquired of the Lord, and the Lord answered him, Go down to Kelia, for I am going to give the Philistines into your hand. So David and his men went to Kelia, fought the Philistines, and carried off their livestock. He inflicted heavy losses on the Philistines and saved the people of Kelia. Now Abithar, the son of Ahimelech had brought the ephod down with him when he fled to David at Kelia. So, uh, in chapter 22, uh, Saul kills the priests that were at Nob. Uh, he uh, kills the whole priestly, well, it was a priestly town. Uh, all the leaders there and most of the people were priests and priestly families. And Abithiar was the only one who escaped of the priest. David had acquired of Ahimelech uh, and had acquired essentially Dale bread and a sword from Goliath, the Goliath sword. It was a keepsake. And when he was fleeing Saul. And Saul had to call these people up and said, Did David come? And why didn't you turn him in? And they said, hey, he's, he's your servant. We thought we were inquiring of the, uh, the government official and making sure the government functions correctly. And Saul was so wrath, wroth, uh, so angry, that he killed all the men, even though they were totally innocent. And David, I mean, David was innocent, had not been in rebellion. And um, Saul's men won't do it. Uh, so Saul turns to... Uh, Doag, the Edomite, that was the one that snitched on David, and had, and he's the one, he and his servants. So the Edomites, who, even though Doag it was worshiping Yahweh, he did not respect the priesthood. Uh, he came from a culture where anybody could be priest, and he didn't respect the priesthood any more than anybody else. And so he killed all the priests that were at Nam. And uh, Abithyar is the one that escapes. He doesn't get caught up in the dragnet. And he goes and runs to David. And David is now protecting him. And so David has a priest with an ephod to inquire the Lord. He has a Levite that is a prophet to give the Lord's answers. And he hears of this little village, and it's an unwalled village, and the Philistines are going up in Radiant. It was threshing season, it was harvest season, the people were all busy, they'd been, you know, uh, harvesting grain all day, they had th been threshing all evening, and they're exhausted, and the Philistines fall on them to make a raid, and they're grabbing goods, and David hears about it. And as a soldier for King Saul, he would have been sent out to go fight the Philistines and protect the place. And that's his natural instinct. So he inquires the Lord. He has a priest. He has the prophet and uh, the prophet yet. And he inquires the Lord, should I go protect him? The Lord says, sure, go to your job. And the men that are with him. Now, remember, he has about 300 men with him. They're men that are... They're refugees within the country. Uh, they're in debt. They're uh, on the political outs with Saul, and they are been kicked out of their clan, or they've been kicked out of their clan because they're unfit to live with other people. And he's got the misfits, and, and they're scared of Saul, and they're scared of their clan, 
and they're scared here in this countryside where it should be safe. They're scared to go fight the Philistines. And they say, really? We're going to go fight? When we're scared of our own people? And we're going to go fight against professional soldiers? Really? Uh, you sure God told you that? And so he calls the priest out. He calls Gad, the prophet, out. And he says, God, do you want me to fight these people? Do you want me to go defend this village? And God says, sure, go defend it. I'm going to give it to your hands. You're going to win. Well, that gives the men confidence to go follow David. And he goes and takes his men. And they win. And they inflict heavy losses. And they get lots of booty from the Philistines. And they save the people. And they save their crop. And they basically do what the soldiers are supposed to do. They defend the countryside. And this is a good victory. And the men put faith in David as a leader because of it. Um, and David now is acting, in one sense, as king. He has a priest. He has a prophet. He has an organizational structure. He's an effective military leader. They've done effective military campaign. The problem is Saul is still after him, and Saul's going to hear about this. I mean, let's face it. The, the gossip chains are going to go wild with David's victory. And Saul is going to hear he's got an effective military force. He's really a threat to me now. So verse 7. Saul was told that David had gone to Kelia, and he said, God has handed him over to me, for David is imprisoned himself by entering a town with gates and bars, and Saul called up his forces for battle to go down to Kelia to besiege David and his men. When David heard that Saul was plotting against him, he said to Abithiar the priest, Bring me the ephod. David said, O Lord God of Israel, your servant has heard definitively that uh, Saul plans to come to Kelia and destroy the town on account of me. Will the citizens of Kelia surrender me to him? Will Saul come down as your servant has heard? O Lord, God of Israel, tell your servant. And the Lord said, He will. Again, David asked, Will the citizens of Calia surrender me and my men to Saul? The Lord said, They will. So David and his men, about 600 in number, left Calia and kept moving from place to place. When Saul was told that David escaped from Calia, he did not go there. Uh, so David inquires the Lord. He needs to know things that he can't know personally. And he knows where to go get them. Go to God. Get the answer from God. And he gives. And he asks. And part of the function of the ephod and the priest was to give answers from God. And God gives him the answer through the ephod. And so David knows Saul's definitely coming. And the Citizens, even though he saved them, are going to give them over to Saul. That they're going to be loyal to the government. And if Saul accuses David, they're not going to defend David. They're not. And he knows he can't defend the town against Saul. And he doesn't want to fight Saul. He's loyal to Saul. Let's face it, he's still married to his daughter. The daughter may be back with Saul, but... David's still loyal to his wife. He wants, he wants his wife. And so when he hears that definitive the Lord, he does the smart thing and he leaves. He doesn't give Saul a target. And Saul doesn't then come attack Kalia to, to destroy him. Verse 13. So David said to his men about 600, uh, wait, no, verse 14. David stayed in the desert strongholds and in the hills of the uh, desert of Ziph. Day after day, Saul searched for him, but David, but God did not give David into his hands. While David was at Horish in the desert of Ziph, he learned that Saul had come out to take his life. And Saul's son, Jonathan, went to David at Horish and helped him find strength in God. Don't be afraid, he said. My father Saul will not lay a hand on you. You will be king over Israel and I will be second to you. Even my father Saul knows this. The two of them made a covenant before the Lord. 
Then Jonathan went home, but David remained in Horish. Now, David's running. He goes out to the desert. Uh, when he finds, hears that Saul's coming after him, uh, he runs further out in the desert, basically. Jonathan is one of the Saul's generals, and he's been sent out to find where David is. Well, he finds David at Horish. Well, the two of them have a covenant together that was made in private. God's the only one that knows about it, and the two of them. Even the servant that Jonathan had with him that day didn't know about it. Well, now Jonathan comes into the camp with David, and the two of them make a covenant together before God and all the men. Let's face it, Jonathan's men and David's men. And Jonathan acknowledges in front of everybody that David will be king and that he will be number two, that he will not be king in his place of his father Saul. Big admission publicly. The two of them are definitely bonded together. Uh, Jonathan goes back to his dad. No word about what he tells his dad. David remains there. Verse 19, the Ziphites went to Saul at Gibeah and said, Is not David hiding among us in the strongholds at Horish in the hill of Hakala, south of Jesheromom? Now, O king, come down whenever it pleases you to do, and we will be responsible for handing him over to the king. Saul replied, The Lord bless you for your concern for me. Go and make further preparation. Find out where David usually goes and who is seeing him there. They tell me he is very crafty. Find out about all the hiding places he uses and come back to me with the definitive information. Then I will go with you if he is in the area. I will track him down with all the clans of Judah. Uh, down him among all the clans of Judah. So they set out and went to Ziph ahead of Saul. Now David and his men were in the desert of Moan, in their Arabah, south of Jeshimon. Saul and his men began to search, and when David was told about it, he went down to the rock and stayed in the desert of Moan. When Saul heard this, he went into the desert of Moan in pursuit of David. So, you know, the men of Ziph are trying to curry favor with the king, and they know he's after uh, David. And so they come and tell Saul. And Saul acts a little wiser, a little more crafty than he's been in the past. In the past, when he's heard this kind of thing, he's just taken the army and run off and tried to chase David, and he's never caught him. David's always been crafty enough to get away. And God's part of that is God's just been protecting David, and there's been times it was a desperate chase, and... David was running around the hill one direction, and Saul was running around at the other, and they just barely missed each other. And, um, you know, if either one of them had stopped and backed up and gone the other direction, there had been a, you know, battle, and things would have gone very badly for everybody. But uh, here, you know, David's always gotten away. And Saul is just crediting David with being extremely crafty and with being able to uh, get away with stuff. And uh, says, go spy him out, tell me all of his habits, where he goes, who he associates with, um, so I can know every move he might make and be able to plan for it, basically. And so he's going to Moan, to the desert Moan, but he sends the men of Ziph ahead of him to gather that information. So when he gets there, he has knows everything he needs to know, and he has a bunch of information from a bunch of people, not at the locals, not just his scouts in his army. Because they've not been effective. David can counter them. David is effective at sneaking away. Of course, that's God giving him the ability. And so Saul gets there, and uh, verse uh, 26, 
Saul was going along one side of the mountain, and David and his men were on the other side, hurrying to get away from Saul. And Saul and his forces were closing on David and his men to capture them. A messenger came to Saul, saying, Come quickly, the Philistines are raiding the land. Then Saul broke off his pursuit of David and went to meet the Philistines. This is why they called the place Selah Hamahalakoth. And David went up from there and lived in the strongholds of En Gedi. And um, Selah Hamahalakoth means rock of parting. Um, the locals named it the rock of parting because David was getting away by running one, uh, around the hill one way and Saul's men were going the other. And it was a close scrape. Uh, Saul had gotten enough information that he had actually got the drop on David, and this time he was going to catch him. But David was, it was close. David probably could have gotten away, but David, Saul would have been pursuing him hard. It would have been bad for everybody, even if David had gotten away. God does a minor miracle here. Now, it's not miraculous that the Philistines attacked Israel. They're doing that all the time. The miracle is when they do it and when Saul gets the message they're doing it. He's about to catch David, and he just knows it. And then he gets this messenger, Hey, Saul, we got to go do take care of the Philistines. They're actively in the land. we got to, and he's got to go do his job. And he leaves David, and he goes, uh, attacks the Philistines. And he goes, pursues them. And the miracle is that God times it at just the right moment, with the messenger just getting there, just in time to save David, that there's not a confrontation. And Saul goes, chases David. I mean, quits chasing David and goes, chases the Philistines. And David no longer stays in Milan, no longer stays in Ziph. Uh, he goes out to En Gedi. En Gedi is even more desert. Um, desert of Milan was basically only inhabited by shepherds and not necessarily permanently. And everybody that did, they lived in tents and they followed the sheep around and the shepherds led the sheep and the uh, rest of the clan followed the sheep. And they basically had all their people follow the sheep around to wherever in the desert they went. And if it if they were going to go to a really harsh part of the desert, they might leave the women and children and the old men in an encampment up where it was pleasant and follow the sheep down in the rough part. But they would keep sight of each other and if there was a need, they could communicate back and forth and go help each other. Moan is that kind of place. But in Gedi, even then, was the kind of desert where the you measure the distance between weeds and tens of yards, and there'd be a little weed here and a little weed there, and uh, it's rocks between. It's not dirt. It's not soil. It's rocks on top. And there might be a little soil between the rocks. But in Gedi has the advantage that it has deep gullies, deep gorges. And it has hilltops that are rise up really steep with hard climb. And then a livable little area on top where you could camp. And if you could bring supplies and particular water, you could live up there and see for miles. And you could see the army coming and decide, are we going to hold out here? Or are we going to escape down the backside and go hide in the valleys where he can't find us and can't chase us? So David goes to a more strategic place. And two things come out of this. David is acting like a king and God is teaching him how to be king and how to lead men, and how to lead men in battle. And David is depending upon God for his protection and safety. Now, uh, David is being smart and being crafty, as uh, Saul credits him with. But he's also 
inquiring of the Lord. And he has a priest, and he has a prophet with him, and he's acting, in one sense, like a miniature government. And his number of men is trolling. Uh, we said he had started with 300, and they were mainly misfits. Now he had 600, and they're an effective fighting force. And they've defended a city. And he's done what he should do as a general of the armies of Israel. O oh Lord, have us to be faithful as David was, that we are the people uh, that do what we should do. Whatever our job is, have us to do it like we were doing it for you, like David was doing there. Uh, he was loyal to Saul, even when Saul was not loyal to him. He depended upon you. Have us to depend upon you. Have us to do whatever it is you give us to do, and do it well, and that we would do it uh, that we would inquire and study scripture and do it with the kind of character we need to do it to do it well. In your holy name, amen. This has been your host, Frank Reich, Associate Pastor of Family and Ministry at Grace Fellowship Baptist Church. And this is the Wednesday evening Bible study for Wednesday, November 7th, I mean, December 7th, 2022. And um, today is actually... Monday, December 19th, it's my wedding anniversary, uh, my 41st wedding anniversary. Uh, I, the last two weeks have been just crazy busy, and I've not been able to record. Uh, I recorded this one because I'm going to try something different, and we'll see if it works. And um, if it does, I'm going to be trying to do it in the future with other videos and see if it helps. And if it does, tell me in person that it helped you uh, or that it was a hindrance and I will try it again or I'll try to improve it. Uh, you have a blessed week. Uh, have a Merry Christmas. And I hope to see you Wednesday at uh, Bible study where we'll go over uh, uh, Samuel 25 and uh, 1 Samuel 25. And uh, if not, I'll see you Wednesday. I mean, Sunday, um, Oscar has a uh, good sermon prepared, and um, you have a blessed week.